Hello, my name is Reed Yagi. We're going to cover the vestibular case D today. Um, the patient was a 47-year-old female that was referred to outpatient with a script that says BPPV and eval and treat. So kind of going, um, overlooking some of the stuff that she had issues with. Um, just from the case, I'm going to kind of jump straight into part one, but it kind of elaborates on the case throughout this breakdown. So part one, it wants us to discuss some differential diagnoses. Um, besides the obvious BPPV that was already um, sent in from the physician, yeah, from the script, um, we can kind of maybe see that one. Just again, there is that slight bias though, that if a physician gives us that, that's the treat or that's what the condition is. Um, but we shouldn't automatically just rule it out right away either. Um, SPTs, and it does hold some, some merit just because she does have dizziness with some positional change. Mostly though, noted just waking up in the morning. So two actual differentials I would maybe give for this one would be a 3PD. Um, and that's just because symptoms increase with upright position. Again, getting out of bed, symptoms started after an acute injury, leading to a bout, bouts of vertigo, dizziness, and balance disruption, and head motion kind of increases signs and symptoms. And that kind of falls in line with 3PD a little bit. It doesn't mention any true anxiety though. So we can kind of start getting away from that. So my main diagnosis or differential I would focus on right now is probably a post-concussion type syndrome. And that's just because of um, the fogginess and headache that she feels, trouble concentrating, the increased irritability and mood instability can also be a big factor. Um, just again to that mild traumatic brain injuries um, and uh, obviously the balance of vestibular symptoms. I think the biggest point is probably just because that she did have a past medical history of a head trauma with delayed signs and symptoms. So I think that kind of leads me um, to the post-concussion syndrome. So to kind of review some of those um, test results for part two and three of this video, um, what stands out is the VOR was abnormal bilaterally, or abnormal, and that can be either a central or peripheral issue. The four lines that she had trouble with during one of our assessments, um, that's abnormal. Again, though, it could be peripheral, central. She had uh, abnormal smooth pursuit. That's a central sign. Saccades were abnormal. That's another central sign. She had a convergence issue. It uh, was red at seven inches instead of the standard four or the normal four. Um, and that's again, another central issue. So a couple other things kind of quickly get through here. She took the Dix-Hall Pike test. That's a left up beating with torsion. And it wasn't um, right away that it was delayed. And then it fatigued after 16 seconds. So um, that's kind of good. She had some other other things that were good to note, the FGA was 23 out of 30, just above the fall risk. So that's something that PT should really try to focus on and understand. Um, and 22 out of 30 is the fall risk. So she had 23. So we need to be aware of that. Um, dizziness handicap was a 57%. That's not really great. Her um, confidence in her balance was around 80%, 79%, which isn't horrible. Um, Sharp and Romberg, eyes closed. She fell after two seconds. So she's really visual dependent right now. Um, the five times sit to stand was 20 seconds and had to slow down due to the dizziness from the movement. So kind of like exercise induced um, signs and symptoms, again, kind of help leading us to the post -con concussion syndrome. Um, that's kind of my more likely diagnosis at this point so far. Um, again, the subjective is really helpful, kind of leading us in that direction too, as well. Yeah, the central signs indicate uh, the types of lingering, uh, <laughs> lingering head trauma, the potential for a mild traumatic brain injury resulting in the post concussion concussion type syndrome. She, I would not say orthostatic hypotension. It just doesn't fit the neurologic testing. Um, positional changing maybe, but the neurologic symptoms, like it doesn't, they don't really correlate that well. So that's, that's kind of why I can kind of get away from that one as well. Um, and I mentioned why the no uh, anxiety, so we can kind of rule out 3PD. So for the fourth part, I'm gonna talk about um, our, what our first treatment session might look like and some of the specific interventions I might do. I just want to make sure. Okay, yeah. So, and I'll also and I'll add in some time base too for some of this stuff. So, uh, for people with post concussion syndrome, especially coming in to see a physical therapist, I think it's really important that we do address cervical and thoracic um, impairments. So that can look like just doing um, our mobilizations, and I would not do a manipulation at this point, but we can do some soft tissue work as well to the paraspinals or um, yeah, cervical musculature, maybe even some skill, uh, scapular. Scapular strengthening um, has been shown as well to, I think, believe, help with some of those cervical issues. Um, we would do some, oh, and that would be about eight minutes. I would do eight minutes of that so I could bill for it and get paid. Uh, ocular motor rehab, such as gaze stabilization and convergence insufficiency, like interventions, just educating the patient on some stuff that we would be doing to try to help manage those symptoms. I would spend about 10 minutes working on stuff like that just because if it's somebody's first time, it can be really, really irritating. Um, 
and I just want to go slow and educate along the way. So um, again, since it was on the script, it should be screened. So I would do a BPPV maneuver or like, you know, the Dix Hall Pike, or since we had the Dix Hall Pike and it showed that um, Candlelith, the Candlelith repositioning maneuver would be good for this just because of what was shown with the Dix Hall Pike. Kind of showed us a little left-sided canal thiasis in the posterior canal. Left-sided posterior canal canal thiasis is how we should say it. Um, so I would try to do a candlelith repositioning maneuver, double the nystagmus time, which was 16 seconds, give or take, based off the um, test results. So I would do that. Hopefully it would take less than five minutes. That's what I have documented for the time for that. Um, some habituation exercises. Again, what kind of irritates her? Again, more like educating and maybe giving her the MSQ. I'll kind of get into that a little later too. I would suspect that takes another 10 minutes. Um, again, balance training with different surfaces with eyes open and eyes closed. Again, to um, help her assess where she is and what other impairments maybe we can address in therapy or for home exercise program. I imagine that takes me about 10 minutes as well with education. Um, I have review home exercise program and some other further PT education. I'll get a little bit into that um, here shortly, but I would also, I think important for a PT to do the Buffalo concussion treadmill test, especially with somebody who has like that in reduced endurance and um, symptoms that are exacerbated with exercise. So I think I would do a, that testing as well. Progre it's a basically a progressive aerobic exercise program or can help us build to a progressive aerobic exercise program. It's all symptom guided, and I would imagine that takes about nine minutes. Set it up, do it, um, have her relax and rest before I get into it, and then maybe I can do that education piece during that. So um, the education I would provide would be for her to recognize her signs and symptoms of a concussion. Um, if they don't know what they have or they think they're coming in with one issue, but we're seeing another, we need to educate them on that on that condition and then things that they need to look out for to help not increase their symptoms. So. That would be along like self-management of her symptoms or so relaxation, some stress management. If she's feeling them come set on, like coming to coming together, starting, then we can maybe have her just find like a dark room, maybe like noise canceling headphones to kind of help with those concussion type symptoms. Maybe sunglasses if the lights are too irritating. Just really just dole down the um, sensations around her and the environment to try to help not set off any other um, issues. So. Um, and <laughs> depend, she's not very stressed about it, but I think it's good for PT to educate that um, people with concussions can recover. She's going to be hopefully okay, and through treatment, she'll be able to progress and be okay and be discharged in the future. Um, but if not, we need to educate her on recognizing the more alarming symptoms, such as like a more severe headaches than what she's been having already, or new signs and symptoms that she hasn't really had before, or any other progressing signs and symptoms. So then maybe we should. We need to educate her so that she knows that she might need to get out there and go get um, tested or more uh, more in-depth neurologic um, screen taken. Um, so some of the exercises I'll send home with them in prescription be some gaze stabilization or gaze stability home exercises that should be done three to five times a day for at least 20 minutes of the day. And I'll try to have her do that four to six times a week, which is a lot, but um, hopefully they can help manage some of our symptoms. And again, coming back to the habituation exercises, Again, I would have her do the MSQ, and we would try to do that two to three times a day for 20 minutes. Again, four to six times a week. So, I mean, all in all, she's going to be doing close to just for that. 40 minutes, give or take a day, multiple days a week for four to six weeks. We need her to produce, her perform them quickly enough to produce mild symptoms. And, um, yeah, again, repeat them. Should be able to return to her baseline, though, 20 minutes after during the exercise. So if she doesn't, we need to educate her on being able to like dial it back and make sure she doesn't continue to set off her symptoms. So one other thing we could do based off the Buffalo um, concussion treadmill training is the aerobic exercise. We could try to have her perform them to try to help her return back to work and decrease her fatigue. And I would try to hit 80% of her heart rate max for one day, or sorry, one time a day for five to six days a week. Um, so I think that would be a couple of good things that she can work on at home. So some referrals that I would give her would be, again, just maintaining the communication with her PCP. If any of those um, external signs and symptoms are building, she needs to get referred or needs to be able to maintain contact with him. A neurologist, again, if they are progressing and nothing's really helping her. So maybe we should be in contact with them. A psychologist, mental checkups, um, 
I know, again, she doesn't have the anxiety, but I think with the post-concussion syndrome and not being able to work as much, it can increase a lot of stress in somebody's life. So it's good to have them in the works as well. And one other thing I would involve maybe a social worker to help her overcome any other work-related issues while um, going through PT. So thank you. I think that's a pretty good cover of this case and what I would do. Thanks.